Hello my frugal family and welcome to today's video. My name is Christine and today we are going to see how many meals we can actually create out of $30. For this frugal challenge, I have teamed up with my friend Gabby. Her channel will be linked down below and she specializes in authentic Mexican dishes. So if you would like to see a couple of Mexican meals for a family of six for only $30, head on over to her channel as soon as you are done watching this video. Let me tell you a little bit of details about my $30 challenge before I actually show you what I ended up doing. So I've had people complain to me before about my frugal grocery hauls because I already have things in the house. And in this video, I am going to address that. I am going to do my absolute best to spend only $30 for a breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a family of six for an entire week. I am going to assume that you have basically nothing in your house at all except for salt, pepper, and oil. If you have some other pantry spices, then that will make these dishes a little bit easier to put together. But what I will show you will include none of that. For the purposes of this video, you are going to see probably a lack of fresh fruits and vegetables. It may not be the perfectly balanced diet you are looking for. Some people really only have $30 a week or perhaps less to spend on groceries to feed their family. And so I'm hoping that this will be an accurate representation of the different things you can make with such a low budget. Now, if you are really struggling, I do wanna mention that you can check out your local churches for assistance. You can check out your local food pantries or crisis centers. There is no shame whatsoever in utilizing these services for people that are struggling. My town has several of these services and for those that aren't struggling with money, these are great places to give of your time, your money, and if you wanna donate items that they are looking for. I have been volunteering my time with my children at our food pantry once a month for the last several years. It's a really fulfilling experience for us and especially for my children to see that other people really do struggle to feed their family. Now, without further ado, let's head to the grocery shopping and cooking portion of the video. Eat for $30 this week at Walmart. What can we find? What can we I thought eggs would be a great option for breakfast because of the high protein and fat content. I'm not super excited about the price, but I am trying to feed six people here. Three seventy-six dollars for three dozen eggs. I would love to make my own pie crust, but the ingredients would actually cost more than just the refrigerated one. So I'm doing something I haven't done in 10 years is buy pre-made pie crust. I do like chicken bouillon for some quick flavor and at 98 cents for basically 12 cups, that's pretty good. I found this amazing deal on spaghetti, three pounds of great value brand spaghetti for $1.48, that's excellent. And for a quick dinner or lunch, you know, one can of pasta sauce. I thought some rice would go really nicely with our meals for the week. I can get a five pound bag of regular white rice for $2.22. I think that's a really good buy and combined with beans is a complete protein. The cheapest beans I found was a two pound bag of pinto beans for $1.48, I believe it said right there. I like tomato paste also. It's highly concentrated flavor for not very much money. And I wanted to get some vegetables, some fresh vegetables, but they were too expensive. And I, as you can see, was having a hard time finding any frozen mixed vegetables. They were all gone at my Walmart. That's pretty standard. So I found this can, 15 ounce can for 58 cents, which was significantly better than the eight or 10 ounce frozen bag for a dollar. Some onions, I picked those up for some quick flavor. I love cooking with onions. Onions is always on my shopping list all the time. Some fresh tomatoes to go with our rice and bean dish for a little bit of freshness because there's gonna be quite a bit of lacking uh, fresh ingredients this week. Some garlic I think is a great flavor component. I grabbed some bananas for potassium and fiber for the week. I don't eat bananas, I'm allergic to them, but everybody else in the family likes them and is fine with them. And I wanted some apples to go with some breakfasts. I was having a hard time finding some that I liked that was a good price. All of the ones in the bags were fairly expensive, but the Golden Delicious were the cheapest. One pound of carrots for 82 cents. Not the best price I've ever seen, but it was gonna work for this week. And guys, one of my favorite deals at the grocery store, if you can find a big bag of chicken leg quarters, and this is even more than I've seen in the past. I've seen this big 10 pound bag for around three to $3 to 350 or so. 
So keep an eye out for that. You can use it in a lot of different ways. One can of cream of mushroom for a casserole I was gonna make. And I thought about buying bread, but I figured it would be cheaper to buy flour and yeast and make my own. So that is what I did to help us throughout the week. The last thing I bought was a huge container of old fashioned Quaker oats for only a dollar. I just happened to be at my discount store and saw this deal and had to pick it up. This was a lot cheaper than at my Walmart where it was like two fifty, almost $3 for the same size container. This is everything I grabbed for the entire week of meals for a family of six. It doesn't really look like a lot. I spent a total of $30.98 on the nose. Here is my receipt from Walmart, $29.98, holy moly, and $1 for the Quaker Oats at the, my discount store. Because I had limited myself to a $30 budget, a couple of things I would have done differently, which would have set me up better for later weeks if your budget is regularly low. For example, I would have made my own pie crust, but because I was really trying to adhere to my $30 budget for the week, I didn't have the money to buy the shortening. So this was $1.48, I believe, and the shortening, the smallest one I could find, was almost $3, which put me over my total. But I wouldn't have used the entire shortening container so I could have gotten more use out of it and combined the shortening with the flour, made my own pie crust. You see what I'm saying? There were a couple of spices I wish I could have purchased, but they just did not fit into the budget for this week. Let me say a flaw of trying to shop this way. It's okay for some weeks to maybe go to 35 or $40 to save you the money in future weeks. And then you have the benefit of making things from scratch. Let's talk about the chicken leg quarters. I feel like this is one of the best buys at the store and often overlooked. It's 10 pounds. This is a lot of meat. So this is the thigh and drumstick combined together. It's bone in, skin on. It's dark meat, which means it's gonna taste better. It has more fat content, which means you're gonna feel full longer and doesn't overcook very much. And you can use this in a wide variety of applications. Here is the whole kit and caboodle. Beans and rice, of course, a big thing of flour, a packet of yeast so I can make my own bread for the week. Tomato paste, old fashioned oats is a great breakfast option. Lots of fiber keeps you full for a long time. I did grab some garlic and onions for some flavor in a couple of recipes. The chicken bouillon, I don't buy canned chicken broth. I always, always buy it this way, usually in a bigger container, but this little guy is really cheap. I wish I had the money to make my own cream of mushroom soup this week, but I don't. Uh, we're just gonna use this can to help us out on one of our recipes. A couple of tomatoes to go on our bean dish for some fresh veggies. I wish I had been able to purchase more. It just didn't fit this time. A couple of carrots to bump the veggie count. One can of spaghetti sauce. Because I was technically like 98 cents over, I could have cut back on the bananas or not done, done them entirely. But I did like the option of adding some more potassium to our diet this week and a few more calories since everything is gonna be slightly low. The one thing I really dislike about shopping at one store only is my Walmart has probably the worst prices for apples in my area. This was kind of an expensive purchase. Usually I can get this closer to a dollar a dozen for eggs, but not at the moment. So three dozen eggs, that's gonna help us out for breakfast as well. Let me put all this away and let's cut to what we are eating for the entire week. I'm doing some evening prep before tomorrow. I'm soaking the two pounds of pinto beans, the whole bag in a ton of cold water. And I am mixing up two loaves of my no need, no mixer required crusty bread. The recipe is here and I'll also leave it down below. As you can see, the only ingredients are flour, salt, which I already had, yeast that I bought and warm water. So I believe I have enough left to make at least four more loaves, if not closer to six. It's gonna stir them up and cover them with saran wrap and let them sit overnight. In prep for my two loaves of bread I'm making, this is what they look like after sitting overnight. It's all bubbly and sticky. I'm gonna make two loaves. We'll eat one today and one tomorrow. I'm just gonna take some flour and sprinkle it on my countertop, dump these on the flour and put a towel over them and just let them rest for about 30 minutes before I stick them in the oven. There's my two little loaves. They're not that big. Like here's, well, I have really big hands, okay, but there you go. That's the size of each of them. They're not that big, but they should feed the six of us for one meal each. We'll set the timer for 30 minutes and come back and check. Now you're gonna wanna stick whatever 
pan you're using to make your bread in the oven as you preheat the oven to 450. And then we're gonna put our dough into these containers. So I have a Dutch oven. You can use any Dutch oven, a regular one. This one's very, very small. Or a Pyrex bowl is also okay. So we're gonna do both so you guys can see the difference between them. So pull these out very carefully using a hot pad. Isn't that cute? Ryan made that for me for Mother's Day last year. And then we'll put our dough in it. Just a reminder, do not oil these pans. You can sprinkle a little flour, some cornmeal, if you happen to have that in your pantry to keep it from sticking, but it really won't stick that much. Here we go, they are in my pants. And this one we're gonna cook with no lid, but when I do it in a Dutch oven, I like to put the lid back on. Don't forget to use your hot pad because it sucks. So we'll cook this one with the lid for 30 minutes and then take the lid off and go another 10, and then this one for 40 total. Okay, so let's stick them back in. I think and it's pretty obvious that you need a lid on your bread. So if you have a bowl and not one of these Dutch oven pans, I would find some kind of oven safe lid to put over top of it so it cooks correctly. This is still fine to eat, it's just not as pretty and doesn't have as nice of a crust. Always put a lid on your bread, but there we go. Two loaves of bread for the next two days. We still have a ton of this bag of flour left. I think it's only to there, and I took six cups out of it. We're gonna have bread all week. Days one through three of breakfast are going to be oatmeal topped with two chopped up apples for some sweetness and fiber and vitamins. As you can see, I've chopped two apples and I have four left. So let's divvy these out between the containers. Go. Ryan is telling me he does not want apples. So one of these bowls is going to be skipped on the apple. We're skipping that one. Ryan doesn't want apples. We still have quite a few. These are really big apples. I ended up cooking six cups of water and three cups of oats for several minutes, and I still have quite a few, so I'll easily get through the first three days. And if you have a stocked enough pantry, you can add some brown sugar and cinnamon on top of these. I didn't today because we're going extreme, extreme. Two slices of homemade bread, one fried egg with salt and pepper, and half a banana. I only have enough bananas to do this for two days. I'm all out of bananas, so breakfast for days six and seven are going to be one fried egg, salt and pepper if you like it, and two slices of homemade bread. One loaf of bread can feed my whole family of six easily with a couple of slices left over, so we can do less than one loaf of bread for one meal. And if you happen to have butter, peanut butter, or jam, or something already in your house, you can go ahead and add that on your bread, but this is good just to eat plain. The beans have soaked overnight. I just uh, drained and rinsed them, and I put them in my eight quart instant pot. And you, as you can see, I'm sitting at over eight cups. So we're gonna add the water on top of this. You can also cook these just in a pot on the stove or in a crock pot, it's totally up to you. For my first few days of lunches, we're gonna do a beans and rice dish. I have half an onion and three garlic cloves sauteing in a little bit of oil, and we're gonna add the pinto beans that we cooked up, all two pounds of them, all of them. And hopefully, I would love it if this dish could get us through three or four lunches. I mixed up two cups, maybe two and a half cups of water with one more of my chicken bouillon blocks. And these are bigger, so it's like the equivalent of two cups of broth instead of one. We're gonna dump this in our beans. I already added a touch of just plain water to get it going. Half of my can of tomato paste. See, I would say three tablespoons or so. If you have oregano in your pantry, now's the time to add it. There are a couple of ingredients that I would have liked to add, but I, they didn't fit in the budget this week. Some cilantro, some green bell pepper, but it just didn't work, so. We're gonna kind of bring this up to a simmer and simmer it for about an hour while we cook up our rice to go with it. Cooking up my rice for my beans, I decided to start with two cups of dry rice and four cups of water. I divvied out my rice and beans into six containers. So this is what, what one lunch would look like for the six of us. And because most of us have to go to school and work, most of them are in Tupperwares. All of my kids do have the availability of a microwave at school, and Dave has one at work to reheat their items. I measured out one cup of rice and one cup of beans, and I'm still left with more than half the pot. I did add quite a bit of salt. There's a misconception a lot in my videos about how much food I'm serving. So I wanna show you one of our large bowls that I use a lot for filming because it's wide and white and looks nice. But in comparison, this is your standard Corel cereal bowl. Okay, so I want you to look at the size difference here 
and here, Corel bowl, my bowl. Very, this is a enormous bowl. Um, and this is like your regular serving size. So if you put all of that into that, it would fill it almost to the top. I just like this bowl for filming. Days four, five, and six for lunch, we are going to have chicken fried rice. Kind of. It should have soy sauce and stuff in it, but if you don't have that, you can just eat it this way. Or I scrambled up some of the eggs, carrots, and onions that I picked up earlier. Rice and chicken. If you happen to have soy sauce, you can add it. Or it's fine to eat just like this with just some salt and pepper. I was gonna put some sliced tomatoes on top, but Dave actually ate them all with his rice and beans. For our last lunch, I took the rest of my tomato paste that I hadn't used, mixed it with some water, and made kind of a spaghetti-ish sauce over the rest of my pasta. And of course, more homemade bread. For my first dinner, I'm gonna start with a 10 by 15 glass baking dish. You could go with a nine by 13. That's a nine by 13 inside of it. So you can see that it's significantly bigger, kind of side by side. So I'm gonna use the bigger one because I'm bumping up the rice amount in this one, just to make it more filling for my active kids. We'll start with two cups of our plain rice. One and two. Two cups of just uncooked rice, very, very plain. And I'm gonna top it half of this chopped onion. Here come the onions, and I'm gonna say, oh man, this onion's strong, my eyes are burning. Oh my eyes, my eyes! Next up, we're gonna pull out our huge bag of chicken and figure out how many sections of chicken we actually have and how many we can use in this dish. I put all 10 pounds of chicken in this big glass bowl and I came up with 10 chicken leg quarters. So for this dish, I'm going to take three of these joint pieces, cut them into two portions, and place six chicken pieces here. All right, we're pouring our mixture over the chicken and rice. If you wanna use the smaller pan, you would just cut the rice and fluids in half. Now, if you have a stocked spice cabinet, you'll have this already which is the crowning achievement of this dish. So if you do have Uncle Tony's, that's what we call it, sprinkle the whole top with this. If not, you're just gonna sprinkle with some salt. Since we're extra, extra budgety this week, we are going to just use salt. Put it in the oven and bake for 375 at one hour. I still have over half of my original bag. Here's a completed chicken rice dinner. And Here's the rice that we have left over. That's probably enough for two people, I would imagine. So we're gonna save that for like a leftover lunch later on in the week. All I'm not gonna lie, this rice is some of my favorite rice to eat. And here's all the plates at the table. We have one piece of bread for everybody so far. If you have a couple extra dollars, have some broccoli on the side or maybe a salad. But if you don't, it's plenty of food. I'm getting ready for my dinners for the next two nights, which are going to be chicken pot pie for two nights in a row, which is great because my family loves chicken pot pie and I need some cooked chicken for it. So I'm gonna grab, this one is very, very large. So we'll put this one in. In my Instant Pot, I have two chicken leg quarters, which is one, two, three, four pieces, if you will. These are very, very big. I would say at least a pound and a half each. So maybe three pounds of chicken. I am going to cover this pretty high with water to try and start getting a nice stock. So I took the chicken I cooked up in the Instant Pot, took it off the bone, and put it into my two pie shells with one can each of mixed vegetables. And I have my pie crust right here. I'm only gonna do one pie crust on the top to make sure I get two out of this. And I'm gonna be making my sauce out of the chicken stock that I got from the Instant Pot along with some flour, oil, salt, and pepper in a pan. So I'm gonna make my sauce right now and then get these in the oven. Here's my simple roux out of oil and flour. So I'm gonna cook this for a few minutes, add some salt and pepper, and add my chicken stock. Here's my sauce. I added about half of the pitcher of chicken broth, and now we're gonna pour it into our pot pies. Okay, we're gonna stir these together and top it with our pie crust. Two completed pies, one's for dinner tonight, one's for dinner tomorrow. And I thought I was only gonna have enough bread to go with tonight, but we only ate half a loaf yesterday. So we have enough bread to last us for two more dinners before I have to make any more. We have leftovers. I have a little bit of chicken pot pie, a little bit of the spaghetti, and a little bit of the rice and beans left. Divvy this up to whoever wants each of them, clean these out for tonight, along with some more homemade bread. 
I made a really big pot of chicken noodle soup that we will eat with some homemade bread for dinner for the rest of the week. It has a bunch of that the leftover chicken that I had from that huge bag. I boiled it and got a nice broth out of it, a little bit of the chicken bouillon cubes, the spaghetti noodles, carrots, onions, and some salt and pepper. And of course I showed you the how to make the homemade bread earlier. If you do have in your pantry some thyme or some bay leaves, that is a nice addition as well. As you can hopefully see by what I was able to put together, it is very, very difficult to feed a family of six on only $30 and have a wide variety of foods to eat, lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, and to have a good balance of protein, carbs, and fat. You also noticed me point out some flaws when it comes to having to buy like the pre-packaged pie crust versus the ingredients to make your own. While it would cost more upfront, you would save money in the long run. And of course, several of these dishes that I made would be better with some standard pantry items, Italian seasoning, brown sugar. These are things that a lot of people already have in their pantries that I did not include in this video. You are welcome to use any and all of these ideas in your own life if you need to. There's all kinds of people that can benefit from ideas like the ones I've shown in this video. These are not the only ways to do it. These may not even be the best ways to do it, but they are some of the things that we were able to eat this week. My family was <laughs> not thrilled that we ate oatmeal for that many days in a row, and they were truthfully really, really missing my homemade pie crust on the chicken pot pie. But it is what it is. We all survived. We all had enough to eat. Bellies were full at the end of the day, and that's all that matters. Now, if you guys did enjoy this extreme grocery budget challenge, please let me know down below, and I will consider doing another one very similar to this. If you haven't subscribed yet and you wanna see any future videos that I do, go ahead and do that down below. Hit the thumbs up or thumbs down button, depending on what you thought of this video, and I will see you in the next one.